between their playoff and regular season success in recent history, these are the top 10 NBA players right now. Number 10, Joel Embiid. His first MVP season was one in which the seven-year product of Kansas posted career highs by far in points per game and field goal percentage. This resulted in a second straight scoring championship for him. In the postseason, Embiid averaged 2.8 blocks per night, which only trailed Anthony Davis. The reason Embiid doesn't rank higher than number 10 is that his playoff scoring average dropped from the regular season by just under double digits, his efficiency from the field fell off by nearly 12 percentage points, and his efficiency from deep went down by over 15 percentage points. Also, historically, he's never made it out of the second round. However, in 22-23, the Cameroonian's mix of niftiness, balance, and soft touch once again displayed to be otherworldly for a man comprised of a 7-foot, 280-pound stature. That much more dominant was Joel's array of drop steps, spin moves, and faders from the post, where he trailed only Jokic in terms of total points from that area. Number 9, Damian Lillard. Dame Time was one of three players next to Trey Young and Luka Doncic to finish with a top 10 ranking in both points and assists per game. He was the only player aside from Luka to rank top three in both points per game scored out of isolations and as the pick and roll ball handler. This led to Damian making his seventh career All-NBA team in what's chalking up to be a bona fide Hall of Fame career. For hitting multiple buzzer-beating series game winners, leading the 2019 Blazers into the conference finals as the number one option without another all-star next to him, and maintaining elite level production, this ninth ranked position seems fitting for Damian. Number eight, Kevin Durant, leading the 2023 playoffs in minutes per night in 11 games. Among the top 10 scores in the postseason, KD's true shooting percentage was only worse than Nikola Jokic. The two wins Durant and Booker took against the eventual championship-winning Denver Nuggets were the most of any team. In those two Ws, Kevin averaged 37.5 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, plus a block and a steal per game. During the regular season, Durant made his second appearance in the 50-40-90 club, one of the deadliest scores in the history of basketball. The two-time champion's 57.1% clip on shots from just inside the arc in 22-23 was the highest mid-range percentage in a season over the last quarter of a century. Number 7, LeBron James. To eliminate the reigning champion Golden State Warriors in the second round, the four-time champion and finals MVP was his prime self on both ends of the court. To close out the dubs in Game 6, he scored 30 points on 80% true shooting. Despite getting swept by Denver in the next round, James went down swinging, posting a 28-point-per-night triple-double average in the conference finals on 52% field goals made. For a soon-to-be 39-year-old to post those type of averages so deep into the playoffs is something we've never come close to witnessing. The physical dominance in which he can utilize at will is still very much prevalent for King James. Number 6, Jason Tatum. This year's All-Star Game MVP and last year's Eastern Conference Finals MVP was one of six players this season to average 30-plus points per game. In the postseason, Tatum was one of three players next to LeBron James and Nikola Jokic to be top 10 in all of points, assists, and blocks. To close out Philadelphia in the Conference Finals, Tatum scored the most points in a Game 7 of all time, going off for 51 points also having time to rack up 13 boards and drop 6 dimes. Jason would follow that up by dropping an additional 4 30-plus point games in the conference finals. From start to finish, JT was an absolute mammoth. Number 5, Jimmy Butler. The Butler did it and then some in 2023's postseason, as the Heat's pure playoff performer is at the very least among the top 5 best players in basketball. Jimmy ranked third among all players in usage rate in the playoffs. He averaged nearly 38 points in round one to upset the number one seeded Bucks in five, making it only the sixth time in league history that a number eight seed won a playoff series. Dade County's superstar was one of two players only other than finals MVP Nikola Jokic to rank top three in both points and assists in this year's playoffs. Additionally, Jimmy ranked number one by a significant amount 
in total steals. The gap between Butler and the number two ranked Murray in that category matched the gap between Murray and the number 12 ranked Caleb Martin. Butler also proved himself to be the NBA's clutchest player this year. His 13 point lead over Nikola Jokic in playoff clutch points matched the gap between the second ranked Jokic and the seventh ranked Murray. Number four, Luka Doncic. Dallas shockingly missed the postseason in 2023, but their Slovenian sensation did have another monster campaign. Luka finished second in scoring, ninth in assists, and led all point guards by a mile in rebounds per game. The gap between the number one ranked Doncic and the second ranked Lamelo Ball in boards per night among PGs equaled the gap between Ball and the number 15 ranked De'Aaron Fox. Doncic posted career highs in points and steals per game, plus field goal percentage. In terms of the postseason, do not let it slip your mind that in 28 career games, Doncic has posted a 32.5 point per game average on 58% true shooting, a monster output. Number 3, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Greek freak remains our game's most dominant player in the restricted area. The 22-23 campaign saw Antetokounmpo be the only man to rank top 5 among all players in both points and rebounds per game. His 31.1 per night scoring average was a career high. He was forced to miss games 2 and 3 of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals, in which the Bucks took an all-time upset L to Butler and the Heat, but did score 38 in Milwaukee's final playoff game. While it was far from the best series from Giannis, given his Bucks won the title a couple years ago in 2021, with this man averaging over 35 and 13 in the finals, we can't let recency bias cloud our judgment. Giannis is easily a top three player. Number two, Stephen Curry. Curry's first round series against Sacramento in 2023 will go down in history. Steph strapped the Warriors on his back into the second round with a 34 point per game average over seven games, scoring 50 in the closeout victory on the road. During the season, Curry led the league in average threes attempted and made an NBA 7th best 42.7% of them. Proving he's the game's best 3-point marksman by a mile, the NBA's all-time threes made leader led the league in attempted triples by at the very least 3 more triples per night on average than anyone in the top 19 in deep range efficiency. Curry averaged 27 in the Dubs' second round loss to LA, a year after fueling Golden State to their fourth chip in eight years with a 31 point per night average in the finals on a monster shooting split of 48, 44, 86. Number one, Nikola Jokic. In 2023, Joker became the first player of all time to lead a playoff run in total points, rebounds, and assists simultaneously. Aside from also leading the 2023 playoffs in a run where he secured he and the Denver Nuggets' first championship trophy in just about every basic and advanced stat, Jokic proved that he was the most elite post scorer in the game, and it's not even close. During the regular season, his 440 total points from the post were 100 more than the second ranked Embiid. That was a bigger gap between the second ranked Embiid and the number seven ranked DeAndre Ayton. Then in the postseason, Nikola's 133 points from the post were 73 more than the second ranked Embiid. There's no gap that equates to that one, considering Embiid scored 60 points from the post total. Insane stuff. It was an all time campaign from start to finish for the two time league MVP and now finals MVP, as the greatest passing center of all time deserved to be ranked as the game's best player right now. Who was snubbed from this list? Who was too high or too low? Let me know down below. DFlow signing off.